What's up everybody, it's Far Out here. I wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes look at how I made my new remix for Seven Lines' song called Beyond the Veil featuring JT Roach. I got to premiere it last week in front of 15,000 people in Los Angeles and the response was amazing. So I thought, why not give you guys a behind the scenes look in terms of what goes into a song when I produce it, certain sections, and if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to throw them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into the remix. So story time, about a month and a half ago, Seven Lions and his team reached out to me to remix uh, this song off his brand new album called Beyond the Veil. So that's the title track of the album. Uh, I was really honored. I'm good friends with Jeff and I really respect him and look up to him as a musician. So I was excited when I got asked to do the song. So as a big fan of the original, I wanted to do something different. So the original is a little bit more on the relaxing side where my goal with this remix was to make it more dance dance friendly. If I was at a music festival or a nightclub, what would I want to hear? So I had some driving bass lines going and then I really focused on finding a chord progression that was uplifting, like feel good and, you know, kind of then all blend it together. So these were the original vocal stems that I was given from Seven Lines. So let's take a listen here. City lights, they hide the stars, but they watch us from afar. So every night they're ours to find. So these vocals were already processed and super high quality. Uh, JT Roach is an amazing vocalist and musician. So here we have the main stem and then an effect stem. So I didn't do too much to it. A little bit of EQ. To just take some of the lows out. A little high end boost around 9, 10,000 hertz. And then added a little bit more reverb to the backing vocals, which is what's happening right here. But besides that, I didn't touch the vocals. And they were pretty much perfect. So. The next step, what I normally do is I always start with some ambience and some chords. So I was playing around for about a day with certain chord progressions. And but how I like to do that is I like to get some ambience or background layers. And this kind of helps set a foundation for me to put chords over and helps me kind of get in a mood to, to help write the song. So here's some background vocals super ethereal and just kind of create a cool atmosphere go back up here to the vocal and together right city lights they had the stars but they watch us from afar so every night they're ours to find so then i ended up adding these chords So these are a few layers, but they're actually quite simple. So this is a, let's do the first layer first. This is just a really simple saw. <clears throat> yeah, this is just a simple saw. One oscillator is on. Uh, what else is going on here in terms of effects? Yeah, barely anything. A little bit of the hyperdimension setting, a little bit of reverb, but you know, we've got a filter cut off okay, so you can open it up keep it down and yeah this this just felt right so i played this with the vocal it's the wall all the different people come with good and evil after all yeah so that just feels good this chord progression felt right let's back it up here so when I add this with some of the backgrounds, and then I just built on this, so I added some strings here. This is like a trance pad. I think it's from, yeah, it's from Spire. And this is from, what pack is this from? Uh, I think this is from Freshly Squeezed. They make a... Yeah, this is from Freshly Squeezed. They make amazing um, 
amazing preset packs. And then uh, we're just altering the cutoff here as this cord kind of opens up. Here it is. So here's the automation. And that's affecting the filter cutoff. And you'll hear it kind of go up. And then for processing, I've got some distortion, compression, and a track spacer. So this is, the track spacer is a cool tool. So basically this is a way to duck the pads or instruments when the vocal is playing. So I have the vocal as a sidechain input into this, and this ducks the pads when the vocal plays so that the vocal stays in the front in the mix. And then I think the last layer is a choir. This was a new, um, yeah, this was a new in, like instrument I, I recently purchased uh, from Orchestral Tools and just kind of acting as a layer. So then we put them all together. And uh, yeah, I thought it sounded awesome. And now if we add the ambience back in, we kind of just have a nice full kind of breakdown and this is how the remix started. So I put the vocal back in. City lights, they had the stars, but they watch us from afar. So every night, they're ours to find. We've been counting down the days while we carry too much weight. You're on our minds. You're on our minds. No, it's hard to gamble. It's a lot to handle when your back's against the wall. So after this section, um, I just had some plucks and a little bit more ambience, but we're basically, I'm just holding the last note of the chord. So this part here. So this, this is a, whoops, no, I do not want to update silent. There we go. I thought I had to restart the entire stream. Yeah, so this is from the Mayan pack. Just a simple kind of dead mouse. Uh, yeah, but super nice. And then that's layered with this. I think I found this on Splice. But I love using ambience and ethereal things in the background and kind of together. This this ambience or ethereal kind of stuff that's in the background like that's really what kind of makes this part without it it's pretty basic so and then i added a top pluck and these are spire again i love using spire um i love it for plucks and just trancy instruments there's a couple layers here And where are those going? In terms of processing, I think I've just got some compression with the Wave CLA-2A. Some... Yeah, a little bit of EQ. So then we put the vocal in, right? And it kind of just... The point of this part is to give the... If you're in the crowd at a show, right? We've got it building... Um, Got a building through the breakdown here, and this is kind of to give the people just a chance to be able to breathe. So if I... All right, so with the drums and everything. And now here come in the plucks. And this is kind of just let everyone take a breath, get ready for what's to come. So not a lot going on here. Plucks, some ambience, and a top melody. So yeah, that's basically how the remix started, and I really liked the feeling of it. And now it was just about, okay, let's build an entire song around this. So that took me about a day. So the first drop I worked on was the 
melodic drop and these are actually just taking the same chords that are in the breakdown and just kind of chopping them up with some new instruments so So let's go through what went into this drop. So we've got our Solaire. Let's see what this is. So I've got three layers here. The first one is from Serum. That's actually a saw preset from a Virtual Riot pack. And I've got Another one. And then that pluck that you heard in the build up, that's now the cutoff is fully open. And then for processing, it's got cutting out the lows, camel crusher. Oh, I don't know why this isn't showing. There we go. And then we've got an EQ here doing some boosting around nine and a half to 10 um, K Hertz. So what really makes melodic drops for me is also again, throwing in some background ambience and just kind of elements that fill the space. So these are playing in the background and these really kind of, to me is what kind of makes it special. And this takes a long time for me to kind of layer and get them right. But usually I'll start by playing the chords and I'll kind of add layers one at a time. So if we break them down, there's the first one. This is another more of a really high, I've pitched it, it's a high choir. A couple more choirs. More of a lower airy ambience. This is just a vocal that I've cut and looped. And then all those get grouped together and I do some EQing. There's some, uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know, my brain's a bit tired. The decapacitator, excuse me, the decapitator. And then they're just going through some side chain with LFO. So, yeah, all these as a whole sound nice. But then now let's go to the bass. So the bass, here's the sub. So the sub's kind of cool, or the bass pattern in this, right? There's breaks. And I have these o higher octave, kind of just to kind of create a groove. Like there, it goes up. And these are the little things that really matter in, in dance music is doing these octaves here where it goes up. Oh, there's a mistake that shouldn't be there. But that kind of helps keep this drop moving. And that's a subtle thing that most people might not notice, but it, it's pretty important. And then for the mid basses, playing the same um, MIDI, but let's see what the layers are here. Got something from Saw. Yeah, something called Saw Massacre, take the reverb and delay off. Another, uh, let's play them one by one. So a saw. That must be just like another pluck. Yeah, and then all these together go in here and there's a decent amount of processing. Um, yeah, just nothing fancy. An EQ cut at probably 90 or 120. Camel Crusher, then going through more compression. I've got more EQ, another dip, and then all going through an LFO so that they dip when the kick is playing. What is this? Oh, here's another bass. Holy. Okay, so you can see here, I tried a whole bunch of different bases and eventually landed on, yeah, this one, but that takes me a while. Um, 
And then, yeah, when you hear it with the kick, kind of, that's where we... And then we play it with the chords and everything, and we've kind of got this drop done. Then it's just about adding drums to kind of make it, you know, adding some hi-hats and cymbals to kind of make it a little bit more intense and fun. But you'll see if I take the ambience out, it kind of does matter. Oh yeah, I didn't show this, but um, this is something that I've been using a lot recently for bass layers. It just makes them sound so cool. So yeah, the drums in the drop are super simple. It's just a kick. I've got a a ride. More cymbal crashes. Then we've got some... This is a bounce of mine from a, a song I had in the past. Okay, we've got the snares coming in. Probably some hi-hats now. With some claps. More loops. And then here we've just got some white noise. Yeah, some crowd effects. Yeah, so all together, that's kind of what makes up the drums. And then there is a top melody you'll hear in the drop. I think uh, here it is here. That This comes in halfway through. Oh, and I've got some plucks as well. Let's go to these first. Yeah, I think these are just like a square, a saw, and some white noise. Let's see the processing, probably not a lot. Yeah, just again, some camera crusher, compression, some imaging to widen. Oh, these aren't opening. This is an imager I use just to make the it go wider in the stereo. And then these plucks, it sounds like a piano. Yeah, here's a classic Nexus piano that I like to use sometimes. Uh, another random pad or pluck. Oh, another piano. And then those kind of all together are kind of what keep the drop moving right something different so then you can hear them so the pluck is supposed to be very in the background it's just you know something that you kind of not notice you don't really but and let me bring the vocal back in Okay, so basically when I got to this point, I had the full breakdown and the melodic drop, which I was really happy with. So then I took a break and kind of came back to needing to do the intro and outro with the bass section. So kind of how would I introduce the remix and what would be more of the 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 driving bass line dance parts. So now we've got our breakdown now. So now the next phase for me was what's going to go into the breakdown and this took a while, but I, again, ended up being super simple. Um, this is just a bunch of bass layers. So let's, let's go through each one or I'll play, I'll play it first. So you can all hear it.
Okay, so let's go into the base. So I've got my first layer. This is actually from uh, Mayan. He's an artist um, that's released on Anjuna and Ophelia as well. So this is from his sample pack. This is just a simple base shot. Okay, so I've basically taken that and cut it at certain points and also duplicated it later in the drop when we have to go up and down to make different notes. Here's another layer. That's definitely from Spire, I can tell, that I exported. Here's probably the main base layer. So again, tried a whole bunch, ended up landing on a couple. Let's see, uh, there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, four layers here, uh, making up this base pad, or this. And then here's the sub. So all in total, there's like four layers here, five, six. So six layers total. So that's a lot, and the frequencies can add up. So usually uh, EQing is pretty important. And let's get into it here. Yeah, again, then I'm grouping them all together. More Camel Crusher, more compression. That might be the same channel, I'm not sure. Nothing going on there. Yeah, so here's Rift. Just a little bit. And then you'll see here I've got for the final bus more more uh, saturation. And then we've got a couple of reverbs. And these are probably just to fill space in the mix when the bass isn't playing. So typically when you're introducing a section, I'll usually add the basses that'll be here and I'll reverse them and add some effects so that the listener knows it's coming. So, so here's one. some effects yeah so those are important uh then we've got just some more like random bass samples that i would have found on splice and stuff that kind of those fill some of the gaps let's see what these are yeah so that's kind of like a weird snary bass thing another one so here's an example just random Let's see what else is going on here and then yeah these are all these cool effects that I like to add in the background so these things all just kind of fill the space and help create this cool groove And then what I did was I needed to start blending in or getting the listener ready for the breakdown. So I kind of added some melodic elements here. So these come in about halfway through. So one's a vocal, just like a vocal ambience, and one's kind of like this guitar playing an arp. So you can kind of hear those here and those get louder and louder as we kind of and then I kind of bring the vocal in just the background and then maybe let's see what the drums are like for this more of the bass sections Okay, so just a simple kick and a snare. Okay, some hi-hats and open hats. And then after that, we've got some white noise again, probably. Yeah. And then I've got some kind of cool, just random things in the background. And here's just some risers. OK, 
Yeah, so all those are, you know, details that most listeners, like, don't know what go into it, but these all are really important in kind of filling the background space and just creating this entire atmosphere to the song, to the song. So all together, sounds like this. And what else? Maybe we'll look at uh, the build-ups quickly. So the build-ups, let's see what this is playing here. After the melodic drop would play. So what are these? It's just like a random cool some effects that I found. Some risers. So this is after the melodic section we would kind of build and get ready to go back into the more gritty baseline sections. So this is a combination of downlifters, uplifters. These are just some basic um, snare loops. Yeah, so they kind of all add together. And then what I'll do here is the bass line will get it going again, but it kind of is filtered. And then there's some reverb opening it up as well. Yeah, so I didn't do a ton, but if you listen to this, I think this is it. This is kind of a a technique you can use. All right, so if I up this a lot. That's probably this is getting automated. So that's here, right? So that's kind of a way to you know, make it make the build up sound a little bit bigger. But I did not use that much of it, just a bit. Yeah, and this is, um, you know, mainly the same as the first one, the first bass uh, drop, not too much going on. Maybe just some slight changes with where I'm using the drums and the risers. And then we've just got the outro, which is just the drums, just so that when I'm playing it live, I can mix in other songs easily. So, you know, this version doesn't tend to do as well on Spotify, and I don't even listen to it on streaming services, but it's strictly for when I'm DJing and performing, these outros and intros act as a way to easily transition to your next song. So I think that's, I've pretty much covered the whole remix. Um, if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to share them in the comment section and I'm happy to answer, answer them uh, to the best of my ability. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. And I think what's coming up for me, I've got some new music coming on Ophelia Records. So Seven Lines is label. I just finished some music for the VR game called Beat Saber, uh, which I'm super excited about. And now going back to working on more of the OG far out cinematic songs like New Beginning, Origin, Worlds Apart, Apex, and uh, really excited about how those are coming together. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and all the best, and I'll see you guys soon. Much love.